Hi, I'm Dr. Denis, and on this video, we're going to look into how to calculate the mean electric axis on ECGs. So what is the mean electric axis? So the mean electric axis is like a net direction of the cardiac depolarizations across the heart. In other words, is the direction towards where the, the summation of all depolarizations of the heart, of the cardiac cells, what, which direction they go towards, okay? So if we look on the entire heart, the normal axis of the heart is from the right shoulder in humans to the left leg, or in these dogs, or in, in dogs and cats, would be in the direction of the yellow arrow here. So I like to think on the ECG as each lead you are looking to the deposition of the heart in a different angle. So in this case, you could look from the left shoulder, comparing the right shoulder and left shoulder, like in this case, or from the left leg towards the right shoulder, or even from the other side. Each time you have a different angle that you're looking into the heart, that's a different electrical, a different lead of the ECG. So think of the mean electric axis as the compass, where you always point towards where is the problem. If you have a problem in the right side of the heart, the mean electric axis will deviate to the right. If you have a problem in the left side of the heart, the mean electric axis will deviate to the left. Let's take a look how we calculate it. Again, thinking like a compass, let's overlap the heart on top of uh, this drawing. So remember that the normal dep depolarization of the heart comes from the sinus node somewhere here. Let me get you a better color there. Uh, okay, so the sinus node here to the AV node cell by cell and from the AV node through the conduction system of the heart towards the right side and the left side of the heart. Now, in dogs and cats, it reaches the subendocardial area here, right under the endocardium of the right and the left ventricle, and then goes cell by cell towards the outside part of the heart, the subepicardical. So as a consequence, the mean electric axis of a normal patient should be in this direction. Now, if it's deviated to the right, so it means that there is some problem with the right bundle, in this case, a right bundle branch block, or an increase in the size of the right ventricle. So if there is a block in this bundle, the electricity will go first to the left side and then go cell by cell towards the right side of the heart. Because the right side of the heart will be the last one to receive the depolarization, the mean electric axis will shift towards that side. On the contrary, if, and let me clean this up for you guys. If one of the branches of the left side, for example, will have the anterior fascicle and the posterior fascicle right here. So if one of them is blocked, for example, right here, the depolarization will go cell by cell and then go up in this direction through the wall of the left ventricle. So as a consequence, that will be the last side the, to receive the depolarization. So the mean electric axis will shift in that direction. So in this case, we can see that, if I can move to my next slide, that left bundle branch blocks and the block of the left anterior fascicle or increasing the left size of the ventricle will be the most common causes. So for you to understand how the mean electric axis is calculated, you need to understand the difference between bipolar, uh, the, the leads of the heart. So we have unipolar and bipolar leads, but don't get caught on the, on the terminology. Try to think that if you use two leads, for example, lead one, 
you can compare right shoulder versus left shoulder. And that you give you the lead one on the ECG. Considering that you're looking from this angle of the heart, consider this is a big eyeball here. You're looking that angle. So if it's going from left to right shoulder, it will be a strong positive wave. Now you can move, you can shift around the leads of the heart of the ECG. So in this case, we are comparing the right shoulder with the left leg, which is the typical lead shoe on the ECG. Okay. Uh, it should be positive in normal animals because that's the normal angle of the heart. Now you can also combine leads so you can have different angles like you can combine the two four limbs versus one leg to get an AVF lead which will be much more towards the foot okay so by combining different leads this is how we end up with the lead system of the heart so if you want a little hack how to remember the lead position this is how I think I normally draw the leads and I think on like, the first one is lead one, the right shoulder, left shoulder. And I do lead one, skip one, lead two, skip one, and lead three. The one that points towards the foot is the AVF. And now you only have two left. The one that goes to the right, the AVR, and the one that points to the left, the AV AVL. Okay, um, we will provide you the diagram every time you'll be tested on this, okay? Because it can be quite confusing. Now, the most important thing to um, remember, it's that the leads will change with the, how the depolarization goes towards the right, more towards the left, more towards the right. Let's take a look on this. So here we see a typical ECG of a human, but it's applicable to animals as well. So you have lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. So if you look here, lead two is supposed to be the normal axis of the heart. In this case, I can, I can move the, the angle of the axis, the mean electrical axis, and see what happens. Pay attention now, the lead shoe is the biggest wave. And keep, keep looking on the lead shoe as I turn it to the right or left. So lead shoe is the tallest R wave right now. But if I start moving the mean electrical axis and shifting to the right, now the lead shoe is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. When I reach somewhere right, around right here, I am 90 degrees. I am 90 degrees from lead two. That makes that specific lead isoelectric, which means the same amount of little boxes up and down. That means that I'm, I'm 90 degrees from that angle. So you can't see if it's coming towards or away from that specific lead. And if I start moving away from lead two, getting more and more away from lead two, eventually, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach a, ta a moment that lead two is very negative. So as you can see here, a very negative lead two could be a, a caused by a deviation towards the right side of the heart. Now, because left side of the heart also goes away from lead two, you can always also see a negative QRS complex on lead two. So that's why it's important to at least have an idea in which quadrant we are talking about between lead one and AVF, AVF in 180, 180 to minus 90, and minus 90 to zero. Um, we're gonna go over the normal uh, values for, dog, for dogs and cats soon. So let's take a look on that next. This is my dirty, sim simple approach in how to, uh, how to guesstimate, let's say, the mean electrical axis on ECGs of dogs and cats. I normally look in two leads, lead one and AVF. So, and keep in mind like this, 
Lead one is from right shoulder to left shoulder. So if it's going, if I see a positive wave, it's because it's going, it's going towards the electrode reference. The electrode reference is generally, is always the arrowhead. Okay, see the arrowhead here? That's the electrode reference. So if I see a depolarization going towards the foot, I should see a positive spike on the paper, on the ECG trace. Now, if it's going away, then I would see a negative depolarization. So let's take a look on this specific example, which I covered previously in class. Let's take a look here on these QRS complexes, okay? So this is lead one, and they have one little box down, one little box down, and two little box up. So the final is like plus two, plus two up, but minus one. So it's two B plus one. So then I would say that in this case, we have a tiny little marking. I just make two markings here just to make your life easier. Towards the literal reference, which is positive. Now, the, the AVF is much bigger. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and virtually no negative one. So then I have the same number of markings here towards the literal reference, which is this one. So then the mean electrical axis should be somewhere in the middle of these two. And this is one of the ways that we can calculate the mean electrical axis. Now, in this case, uh, I can care less about the number and I care more like which part is, is located compared to the normal range for dogs and cats. So let's take a look on this scenario here. This scenario, I, I just copy and paste the same ECG, so you can see this QRS complex looks the same as this one. It's just that for the purpose of the exercise. But because now I have the same number of boxes up for both of them, then the mean electrical axis will be in, probably in the middle because I will have the same number of boxes up in this direction as I have in this direction. So this is a very simple dirty trick that I like to use is that look on the biggest wave, okay? If the way, if the, if the biggest wave is AVF in a dog, it's normal. If the biggest wave is lead one, then maybe abnormal. You know why? Because that, this is the normal range of dogs and cats. I have highlighted here in green what is the normal range for dogs of the mean electrical axis between 40 and 100. So you might agree that 40 and 45 are pretty close. So then I would say if 45, two waves are the same size, the same positive amplitude. If lead one, it's bigger than AVF, that means the mean electrical axis is shifting to the left side. Now, if lead AVF is bigger than lead one, it means that it's going in this direction, which is the normal range, which is most likely the normal range. That's why I normally, the key point is that the, the curious amplitude on a dog, AVF should always be bigger than lead one. That means normal range. Now let's take a look in cats. Okay, in cats, the normal range, the normal range is pretty wide. It's from zero all the way to 180 or 160, depending on the, which book you read, okay? 160 to 180 degrees. Now, because any angle in this direction, any angle in this direction will make a positive a positive wave on AVF, tiny one or big one on AVF, the take home message is that AVF should always be positive in cats. Simple to memorize. So AVF in a cat should always be positive. That makes your life simpler.
Okay. Now, there are other quick approaches that you can do for mean electrical axis. So, for example, identifying the wave of more amplitude or identifying the isoelectric wave. But that requires you to memorize the entire system of all the six leads, uh, which sometimes is not easy. I gave you the little a hack on memorizing lead one, skip one, lead two, skip one, lead three, AVF goes towards the foot, and then you just have the right and the left. So if you want to use this approach, what you can do is look for the tallest wave. So here you see the mean electrical axis is pointing towards lead one. That makes the tallest wave lead one and the isoelectric one, the one that is 90 degrees compared to lead one. Now, if I have a, a patient on lead two, which is the normal, then lead two will be the tallest one. And the 90 degrees, the, uh, the lead at 90 degrees will be AVL. So as you can see, AVL now is the isoelectric one. Now, let's suppose this, the, the mean electrical axis is totally um, twisted all the way to the right side, like all the way here. In this case, the main, the, the tallest one is AVR. So it's pretty much opposite from Li Chu. So you can, and because the isoelectric one is AVL, you can see that most likely will be in the right side. Now, if it twists to the left side, like this, then AVL will be the tallest one. Okay, so this is a separate, a different way you can also calculate them, guesstimate, let's say. Keep in mind, the normal range for dogs is somewhere between here, 40 from here to 100, 40 to 100. So these ranges for dogs, as you can see, in this case, lead two and AVF will be the biggest ones. And in cats is from lead one all the way to 180. So as long as you have a positive AVF, the cat is normal. So these are all the resources that I posted on Blackboard and I invite you to visit, okay? Uh, this video will also be posted on Blackboard for you guys. And if you guys have further questions, just let me know. Thank you very much. See you next, see you on the next video.